So it seems like a starting point needs to be how we define who owns space. Now, there's some history to this, right? That's right, and it kind of comes out of the history of who owns the sea and who owns the air. Okay. So we know that at the moment on Earth, the rule is that the world is divided up into countries, yep. and if you're in a country, that country determines what the rules yes. are. Um, and there are ambiguous things like if two people claim the same bit of land and so on, but usually yeah. speaking, if you're in Australia, Australian laws apply. Right. Now, the first extension of this was the seas. Yeah, that makes when sense. When you first start getting large numbers of uh, ships sailing around. Which happened in hundreds of years. Then can you actually own the seas? Did, did, did countries try this? Oh, yes. So uh, back in the 1500s, Spain and Portugal basically of divided course. up the world's oceans. Of course. <laughs> they drew, drew lines on the map and said, this is ours. But they, they couldn't enforce it because yes. the French and the British came along and ignored those yes, laws. Yes, exactly. So it didn't work. Um, and then it, it might have worked in the 19th century when Britain was so powerful, it yeah, basically yeah. controlled. But they believed in free trade and they didn't decide to enforce yes. it. So in fact, it became a, a practical norm that nobody owned the seas okay. and that anybody is free to use them. Okay. Um, now, this, there are still people, have, uh, this isn't always 100% true. For example, at the moment, uh, China is claiming yes. ownership of the South China Sea, for example. That's right. Uh, but the, generally speaking, the rule is you don't own the sea except for certain regions close to your boundaries. So, so essentially, you kind of have a, a buffer zone that is part of your land? Yes, so there are complicated rules about this we won't yeah. go into, but basically if it's certain, close enough to your boundaries, it's considered to be national territory. And there are different definitions, like very close, it's definitely your territory. Further out, you have some rights, but other ships can still sail through. Yeah, that's right, because there's things like exclusive economic zone. There's yeah. a whole bunch of these And you can see, a, here's an actual law of Australia's rules, and there are many different categories of these things. We don't need to go well, into... Well, I guess it even gets more complicated, right? Because now you have Antarctica and some random islands that... I, I know there's seven people on Macquarie Island, because... There's seven people on Macquarie Island for for Balm, but so that then has this bubble, and then I guess then applies this applies to every country, right? So New Zealand yep. would have their own bubbles and so but on. Basically, the rule is nobody owns the oceans yep. except very close to your borders. Okay. That now, makes sense. of course, what happened when you start getting planes? So, I would assume you'd want people to be able to fly through because when the first aircraft and balloons came along, people thought that maybe it would be similar to the law of the sea. Yep. That maybe then exclusive zone, maybe up to you know, a few hundred meters, okay. and then above that it would be free for anybody. Yep. But then fairly soon after aircraft were invented, World War One came yes. along, and people realised that these aircraft were very militarily important, and, and maybe it wasn't yeah. a good idea to have your enemy's aircraft flying over your country all the time. Yes. So when the treaties finally got signed, I think it was about 1919, 1920 and so yeah. on, they decided, no, it's not going to be the same as a sea. A country owns the air above it. Okay. So, so the sea, land and air are all slightly different now. Yes. Yeah, so countries own the land. Yep. They don't own the sea unless it's close to their borders, but they do own the air above it. Okay, but where's the air stop? Ha ha, we'll come back to that. <laughs> so anyway, there's, there's a, so there's, this is now the legal zone of Australia. So okay. It's going to go out a certain distance and up a so, certain So there's distance. this, yeah, there's this Australia-shaped bubble here. That's right. Okay. Um, so that's what applies, but does it go all the way up? Yeah, because this is my problem, right? You know, we talked about in the first section of the course, boundaries of where space starts, and like... 10, 20, 30? Yeah. And that would be a real problem for spacecraft. I mean, here, yeah. remember, is what a orbiting spacecraft does. Um, and you can see that it goes around the Earth every 90 minutes. Yes, yeah, so, so if I claimed ownership all the way out up. Out of Ecuador, now Brazil, now Guyana, and then it went over Jamaica, all in a few minutes. But yeah, it, could it extend out to the moon? Yeah, so it could be that a country changes, a uh, spacecraft changes which country's laws apply to it every every two or three minutes as it orbits around the Earth. Yeah. But it might be at the moment, the moon is over Brazil, so Brazil controls it, but five minutes from now, maybe Peru owns it. So we definitely need a, an upper limit on where this applies. Yeah, and, and this is not going to work very well. Yeah. So, however, this isn't... Uh, so we're going to need to work something out here. Yeah. It's not enough just to say... You can go up. Yep. Yeah, 